Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I'm a huge Eurovision fan as well as a musician. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Malta's entry for this year's Eurovision Song Contest, Loop by Sarah Bonici. Now, I've gained quite a few subscribers over the past few days after a couple of reaction videos went up. So if you're new here, um, the purpose of my channel is, um, as a musician, I do kind of um, reviews and musical analysis and commentary of all the Eurovision songs during the Eurovision season, which is something I love doing. Um, and I try and kind of come from an objective point of view when I'm talking about the music, kind of talking about the facts that are coming out of the music. Um, and then I add my own spin on it and give my opinion on the music, more subjective view and a score out of 10 at the end of the video. So that's kind of my shebang on my channel. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that reaction style. And also, um, as someone that's half Maltese, I always get excited every year to see how the um, the Malta entry comes out. They were kind of on a high for the past couple of years until about 2022, um, we had Emma Muscat, who's arguably a big star in Malta and Italy, um, but her song was a bit uh, deflated and it didn't do too well um, in the semi-final, it failed to qualify. And then last year we had the busker um, and that came last in the semi-final, which was really disappointing because that did feel like a bit more upbeat and a better kind of direction to take um, but it just didn't translate overall to the televoters which was a shame. Um, this year we have Sarah Bonici. Interestingly when I did my review of the national final I reacted to snippets of the songs um, which you can watch. Um, I'll go to my channel page and see that in the playlist for national final reviews. Um, this one didn't stand out to me at all in the kind of 10 seconds I heard. Um, from what I remember, it seemed to be quite upbeat. And from um, what I'd heard before of Severo Benici in the national final, she seemed to have brought ballads. Um, but when I kind of summarised the ones that stood out for me that year, um, this one didn't stand out. So I can't really remember how it goes, um, but I'm interested to see kind of from a national final performance standpoint um, and in general, how the whole song sounds, the three minutes. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I scored the song out of 10. Um, and yeah, let's get straight into this. I'm intrigued to see how this one goes. Don't you know that you got me, that you got me, in me. It got me so high. Oh gosh. Burn up like a fever, I'm a honey pie. Never tasted nothing sweeter, thought you could turn me down. Interesting bass line. No, 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 let's go another might be giving me, Don't you tell me Chanel vibes here. It was Just choreography wise. Okay. Okay, so I don't want to make too many comparisons to slow-mo, even though the stage direction here, costumes, everything about the actual visuals of this is very much like slow-mo. Um, I don't think there's any way around it to, de to, to describe it. Um, they've gone for that vibe, which, you know, they've taken inspiration from it and it was a good performance, Spain did. They came third, so why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah you have to state there's a bit of a comparison to be made there um but the actual music itself okay so we've got a sort of reggaeton beat again um the dembow beat just kind of like what luxembourg did which is is nice it's on trend it's a popular thing to do um i think what really stands out in this track is actually the bass the way the bass is moving around it's very slick and sleek um and it slides around which is nice um it feels like that has been turned up quite high in the track as well. They want that to be kind of the prominent part of the backing track um, because I guess what's going on in this song is it's all about the, the vocals, the melody line um, and the kind of spoken word part of the chorus. They want the, the prime focus to be on Sarah herself and then in the backing track, they've kept it very minimalistic and just had that bass line because it's kind of supposed to be a sexy performance and a sexy song. So the bass is kind of like underpinning that all, which is quite good. In terms of the melody and the 
the lyrics and the way it's all coming across so far. Um, it is punchy in places, I think, but there's kind of a slight um, panicky, frantic feel to, to it as well. Um, whilst, I guess, with other songs of this genre, um, this type of performance, this J-Lo style, um, it tends to be slightly more punchy and to the point and it, nothing kind of gets lost. But I do feel like we're getting a little bit lost here. But I must say the choreography looks really great so far um, and the performance is slick. I like the camera angles, actually. They're quite um, dramatic in places. Um, so, so far, it's going well. A little bit like ba -ba 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 -ba. You know how to for me, boy. Don't you know you're my, my addiction? This pre-chorus is giving a bit more of a break in the song as well. Not my father, Chicago. Damn. That bit's quite catchy, isn't it? Oh, a dance break. Okay, yeah, it is a bit like slow mo. Oh, and those orchestra hits as well. That's very much like slow mo. Okay. Blindfold. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> it was obvious. We were dictated. I like that moon backdrop. Yeah, it was obvious. Okay. But I like that R&B riff, it's the way it was trying to go, I liked it. Okay, a bit more of a guttural bass line now. There's quite a lot of dance breaks in here. Um, Okay. Do you know what? It was an impactful performance. It was a lot packed in there for the three minutes. It actually felt a lot longer than three minutes to me. I must say, I think they, they might have slightly overdone the dance breaks in there. I guess the power of a dance break, if you think about it, is like one special moment in a song that you don't forget. It's an, an unforgettable moment, but with this, personally, um, there was about three or four dance breaks in there which were kind of in lieu of perhaps developing more musical ideas and if you took the dance breaks away from what was going on um, and then you actually look at the, the structure of the music and what was going on in the music um, there was actually only about three sections in there um, so you had the chorus and the verse and a pre-chorus and okay, maybe there was a middle eight towards the end with that riff as well. Um, but yeah, to me, this is just personal opinion now. Perhaps there could have been a bit more room to develop ideas in there. Um, there was light and shade in the in the backing track and in, in the, the melody itself and the performance. You know, there was kind of faster paced elements. And then there was bits where she was just showing off her vocals and doing these riffs and runs which was good. Perhaps it was too hammy. There was too much going on. Um, and they were trying to squeeze in loads of ideas into three minutes. And it could be a bit of a sensory overload by that time. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit kind of confused as to how I feel about this because, you know, when you take a stand back assessment, it was good and it was performed well and it was cheeky and it had some nice musical ideas in there i thought the chorus in particular was catchy it was well written like the mama mama bit i think that was good that's kind of the bit you're, you're going to take away from this performance and remember perhaps it was just jam-packed full of too many ideas so that the basic ideas and the bare bones of it weren't developed enough personally for me um so yeah, there's just 
I'm a bit conflicted here, is very different from Malta. It's very different. They've gone for this sort of sexy um, Southern European style tropical reggaeton pop song with a female singer and dancing lead, I guess. Um, yeah, so comparisons will be made to slow-mo. And I feel like slow-mo was two years ago to the point where even the casual viewer who's gonna watch this in the semi-final is going to harken back to Spain 2022. It's not like it was a forgettable performance. It was an unforgettable performance from Chanel. And it's a risky thing for Malta to be doing in this case. It can either be taken one of two ways. It could be, oh, look, this is like, inspired by slow-mo and it's really good or people will be like this is like the tesco value slow-mo if you don't know what that is it's kind of like the um the sort of cheaper version of food we get here in the uk um it sounds like a, a really rude thing to say but i don't mean it in a, in a rude way at all um so yeah i am conflicted as to what to feel about this but yeah um score out of 10 i'm just going to stick with a six out of 10 for this because it is impressive in areas, but I'm just not really quite sure if I enjoyed that or if I was just thinking of Spain 2022 too much. It's a difficult one. I might need to just kind of watch this again in my own time and objectively think about it, not thinking about Spain in any way. Um, but it quite it's quite hard to separate the two, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, but in terms of qualification, they probably, with a televote semi-final, they probably improved their chances on last year. For sure. For sure. We'll see. We'll see. It's hard to call. Um, but yeah, let me know down below in the comments and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more Eurovision reactions because next I'm going to be reacting to Spain's entry. So I'm excited and I will see you guys soon. Bye.